Today we take on the topic, the new Africa, the role of writers in creating it. We will be looking at what role the movies produced, scripts written, and stories being told out of Africa play in globally elevating the Nigerian and African culture. And to do the topic justice, we have a very seasoned and young hand on the show with us. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. A brief introduction. My name is Chisa Bam Ofebu, your host on this segment, Culture Conversations. On Culture Conversations, we will be having meaningful discussions with Africans whose personalities and projects are doing fantastic work in the campaign to reshape the local and global view of the African and African culture. It will be an exciting couple of minutes, that I promise you. I think we can all agree that Africa's image is currently being saved by her arts and her culture of music, fashion, and also storytelling. And today we have with us one of such prolific storytellers and film producers. Her name is Olala Deo Kidari, the first Realness Netflix trained story development executive. She cut her teeth in television writing on Tinsel and has written feature films in television movies such as Cold Willow, Paternity Deal, and Dead Right. She wrote and produced the hit short film After One, a film which explores a new mom's struggle with motherhood and postpartum depression. She's also an author with three published books under her belt. Olalade is the founder of Boutique Story Development Outfit, Emerge Story Company, where she delightfully works with both emerging and established storytellers to see well-developed African stories on the big and small screens across the globe. Her mission is to empower and support emerging African storytellers in their quest to develop authentic stories for the big and small screens and also to bring the global audience closer to our rich and diverse African experiences. Without further ado, let's meet with Olalade. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hi. Thank you so much for making our time to be here with Thank us. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay, so we'll start off with the questions immediately. Okay. So first Netflix trained story development executive. Um, wow, how did that achievement change your and the game for you as a paid writer and someone who is leading a cause like you're leading for writers to be better respected and better paid in industries all over the world, not just Africa. How did that change the game for you? It did a lot. <laughs> um, I think I want to start with saying thank you to Realness <laughs> okay. and Netflix for backing that initiative. Okay. Um, it came at a time when I had just resigned mm. from my nine to five at an advertising company. I just sort of knew that I had um, the steerings of a vision for storytelling in Africa. And um, <laughs> I left the job, promising job, and it felt like, what are you out there to do? And then this opportunity came. So I applied, even though it seemed surreal, mm. thinking I could be, you know, picked, picked selected for that made in edition. Yes, but it's, it was right in time. And um, I must say it's given me great leverage okay. um, to take on advocacy for writers, not okay. just Nigerian writers, because Africa. I then began to see that um, we can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to stand as one. Yeah. And some of the problems, I've, I've begun to travel around and I see that we're not isolated in our problems actually and some of the challenges that we have in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm beginning to learn that, you know, coming together as a collective, as Africans, we will do much more. We'll go further, right? So yes, we began to advocate um, for better pays for writers. Um, I've had the privilege of staffing writers' rooms, being oh, able okay. to negotiate on behalf of writers, okay. better fees, um, and also especially the crafts, you know, to better hone our crafts, to um, develop better stories. I'm passionate that we should not only be, you know, enthralled by the beauty of the film, the, the visuals, the, yes, yeah. the production Con value, mm -hmm. the story is the blueprint, the architecture of a film. And that's where our focus is as, as a company now. Yeah, so in an earlier conversation we had, I think the first day we met you, you mentioned how appalled you were, shocked really at what writers were willing to accept as, as payment. <sighs> you know, it's, for it's, their... it's sad. Um, I've staffed quite a couple of rooms. And up till now, I'm yet to meet a writer who's billed me um, what I had already negotiated on the RBF. So Many the times... <laughs> It's, it's, it's sad. Mm. It's sad. But mm. what we've now begun to do is, and the, the traction we've now achieved, 
is that when you show people what they are worth, they mm -hmm. begin to rise up to it. Yeah. The results that they begin to achieve, the products, which is the stories, mm -hmm. become better. better. And then you realize that people have always wanted more. They've mm. always had the idea that they could command more value. Yeah. But, you know, after years of being suppressed, quietened, and told, this is your, this th is yes, your this price. is all you can, you, yeah. can, you can accept. And it's, it's amazing because it's a knowledge-filled world. You can Google what writers get in Hollywood. You can Google what writers get in, in South Africa. And you wonder why you come to Nigeria mm. and a writer is still being told you deserve 10,000 naira. I mean, <laughs> I don't even want to convert that to dollars right now. Um, to write a movie mm -hmm. or to write an episode, mm -hmm. you know. So what we are doing now is as people realize, this writers realize their value, they're encouraged to do more. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's what's happening. Okay, so um, can you, when you say that, or when the um, confidence level is, you know, um, is yes. increased, the confidence level is increased, yes. the story becomes exactly. a lot richer mm -hmm. and everything. Um, do you have like an instance that that happened? So let me start from... Um, a conversation I was having in South Africa about the idea that people think writing is when you sit on your laptop mm -hmm. and you begin to type. <laughs> <laughs> but the beginning of a story is when you're walking around yeah. on the streets and yeah. you're thinking, you're engaging with yeah. people, different experiences, when you get to travel, when you get to, you know. And <laughs> someone told me about a writer, um, a Hollywood writer, who had come to South Africa just for three months to immerse himself in the story world first oh. and foremost. Now, if you've not even gotten enough money to put fuel in your genera <laughs> generator, and I mean, I better pass my neighbor, you know, you're not thinking of traveling Sorry, somewhere. To go and immerse yourself. <laughs> and so we have plastic stories mm. regenerated in your bedroom. Recycled. And, and Yes, you cannot build stories out of nothing. Mm. At the end of the day, even when they are fictionalized, mm. most times they are, mm. and even when it's sci-fi, when it's, mm -hmm. you know, a you know, world we've never seen before, mm -hmm. it's still borrowed from somewhere. There's yeah. an origin yeah. somewhere. Yeah. I've written stories that have had to do with sex, um, was it sexual abuse. My first novel was on, you know, was my, would, drawn from my work with mm -hmm. sex workers. Mm -hmm. That is living it, mm -hmm. okay? You mm -hmm. want someone to write what it means to live in a world of, the one percent of the one percent mm. but they can't even drive past the gates of banana island mm. you know these are things we're talking about okay. at the end of the day okay. when we empower writers yeah. to live rich fulfilling lives yeah. we would eventually be able to come up with better stories of africa nice, they will be able to envision a better idea of africa you're talking about how we can use storytelling you know, in nation building, mm -hmm. in building our continent, mm -hmm. okay? And it's so important. I mean, wars are now being fought with, with stories. With stories. Yeah, I don't want to mention countries, <laughs> you know, spinning stories to win a war. Manipulation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and it can be used positively or negatively. Negative, but I'm even yeah. saying that to use storytelling effectively in nation building, in building a new narrative of Africa. For Africa. We need to be able to envision what that means. Hmm. And if you don't live fully in the now, hmm. you're going to get stuck in the past. And if you keep living in the, the, the downside yeah, of exactly. Nigeria we'll, or Africa. We'll keep saying that. Yes. The monkeys the and stories. the bananas, yeah. you know, I won't, I won't go into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you work with young people. Because yes, this, this is very important because what I find, what we find is that there's a knowledge gap because there's mm -hmm. not much of the knowledge that we have been passed down. Yes. And there's a lot of stories about the Gen Z and the uh, Gen Y. There's a lot of older people are trying to keep their knowledge close to their chest, mm -hmm. let them earn it, mm -mm. you know, and everything. But how are you and what are you doing to pass on this knowledge of self-respect as a writer mm -hmm. and, you know, what to charge and how to write, as you said, enriching mm -hmm. stories they that change itself. the Nigerian narrative. You know, I, I think first of all, obviously, there has to be a sense of patriotism in every writer. Yes. You can't be the Japan mindset uh -huh. and be writing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, start, but, uh -huh. you know, so there has to be like a sense of patriotism. Is there something you do to instill that in them or awaken it in them, mm -hmm. you know, with your young ones? How do you pass on this Knowledge. That's that's, a, that's, and, that's you know. so important now. Um, I think that um, many motivational speakers and you know <laughs> inspiring speakers as yeah. well um, will tell you that the joy and the pride of every leader is mm -hmm. to have a successor. Yeah. And we're not doing well if we think we can hold on to 
um, the experiences, the knowledge that we've gathered over the years and yes. we'll pass them down. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Times are changing. Yes. At Emerge, we recently started a workshop okay. specifically targeted at young filmmakers, okay. especially teenagers. Nice. And we, in fact, we're beginning to go to schools okay. just to get people who are genuinely interested and gifted, mm -hmm. you know, interested in the arts and entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. When we started the industry, it was largely unstructured and un mm -hmm. unregulated. There was mm -hmm. no formal training. Yeah. So the veterans in, in in the industry learns on the go, mm -hmm. right? They, they didn't go to a formal school mm -hmm. to learn how it was to make mm -hmm. movies. They, they just kept putting, mm -hmm. you know, efforts into it. So how do we now have a new generation and with access? Structure. Exactly. With so much access, you know, to, there's a lot we can do online. There's, there's a lot we can pass across now. And we're not doing much about it. So we are interested, you know, and we said that, and it's, it's so funny, our maiden <laughs> workshop, parents attended. Ooh. And they ended up saying, please, we, we want to be, <laughs> <laughs> who would like to be trained as well. Um, but at the, at the core of this for us was mm. we've seen too many movies, young adult mm. stories being told by adults who do not exactly. even understand the language of this generation. Sean, yeah. We have no business doing that. Yeah. These guys have stories. Um, and I also have a part of me, you know, that is a therapist, a family therapist, mm -hmm. interested in seeing families grow. Mm -hmm. Teenagers, young people have stories they're not telling, mm -hmm. stories they cannot tell their parents, mm -hmm. okay? And then we sit down in the room and say, oh, we want to do a young adult story because we think we know what it means to be a teenager right now in 2023. <laughs> and mm. the, you were a teenager in 1915, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, we, and it's not to say the old... Um, have nothing to say. Away, yes, there has to be a bridge and storytelling is that, yeah. you know, that way of, in fact, it's even therapeutic yeah. for these people to share their stories and begin to impact people at a young age. A that young is what age. we are doing. And we need all the support because okay. not everybody, not every teenager, they're not working, yeah. have the access to be able to afford this kind yeah, of training and workshops. Yeah. So we are hoping that we will get yeah, collaborations, you know, sponsorship partnerships to make this happen, especially in, on the, this, um, on the served on the communities. Served communities. Yes. There's a, we because have of the hardship they bring to us, the a oh lot my of goodness. creativity. Oh my goodness. In Diamond places. in the rough. A lot of raw talents. We're seeing it in dancing. Yeah. You know, you, you're seeing spoken it. Spoken word. Exactly. Yeah, like spoken word. So imagine if we begin to tap that into storytelling as well. Imagine. It's a lot that we are we are leaving out of the table, on leaving the on the table, yeah. as it were. Nice. Yes. So. Um, I always say that Africa is being saved by her arts and entertainment. Yes, the Tiwa Savages, the David Doves, the yes. spoken word artists are just yes. making me proud to be yes. Nigerian. Do you understand? Yes. And it's, 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 um, it's um, possible for us to just be excited about this and just coast and be like, oh, okay, they are doing it. Mm -hmm. But how do we leverage on this momentum mm. and take it to the point where not just Africa becoming a world power, Nigeria becoming the world power it's supposed to be. Because mm. every word is, I mean, there's a negative, you know, rhetoric for Nigeria, but then there's the positive. Mm. It's, so, it's so powerful when I get to hear celebrities talk about the drive of the Nigerian. Mm -hmm. You understand? Have you seen them? Mm -hmm. they are, the way they are driven, mm -hmm. their culture. Yes, I'm like, passionate. this is beautiful. If Dora, the late Dora Queen, if she was oh alive my. today, yeah. But thank you, I Ma, for her. starting this yes. up in, in one way or Branding the other. Nigeria. But, yeah, good people, great nation, yes. any day, any time. So how, how, how do you think we should leverage this, you know, scale it, this momentum that it's being built now? Um, <laughs> I, like I said, I was out of the country and I was asking, who are your favorite Nigerian artists? And non-Nigerians, we're mentioning people like, you know, Inkem Oh, you know, <laughs> it's amazing how far our storytelling has traveled. We don't even know mm -hmm. how that is saving us, mm -hmm. you know, how that builds an expectation mm -hmm. when people meet with us. Mm -hmm. So the stories have gone ahead even before they meet us. And I think it's so important that we begin to invest into mm. that. Yeah. That will be intentional mm -hmm. about the kind of stories that we want yeah. to project to the world. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. Um, and so this is where, I mean, I will talk about policies, right? Mm. This is where we must begin to recognize that this is this industry is not a hobby. It's not a mm. pastime. You know, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, industry all over the world. But we still treat okay, writers, okay, okay. and I'm saying writers, but, but I mean, yeah. I mean artists, artists and yeah. creatives. But we still treat like, oh, oh, you're right. Oh, wow, that must be nice. Like, you know, must <laughs> so now what do you do? Mm. Oh, that's you know, oh, you right. So I, that's that must be nice. That's right? a hobby. So okay. So what do you that's do now? <laughs> I mean, and this this the is mentality. exactly until we deal with that, mm. and you know, place policies even in our educational system mm. that recognizes the 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 
the, the, the weight, yes, yes, of this industry mm. and what that can do yeah. to sell us to the world, yes. right? Yeah. I, I say Nigerians are the biggest sellers of hope and the mm. first to patronize it. Mm. That is why they love us. You yeah. know, we're so energetic, yeah. passionate. So we sell hope. Yeah. And it's time to begin to package that and export yeah. that in the proper way. Okay, so you mentioned something about intentionality. Yes. Um, we're tired of watching movies where it's a non-Nigerian playing a Nigerian mm -hmm. and giving us an accent we don't know who gave it to them. We're also tired of watching movies where it's only the bad side of Nigeria being portrayed. Mm -hmm. In as much as we want to be truthful and intentional we, without, we, without being false, mm -mm. You know, we also want to ensure that we are not spoiling the country. No. You know, so what do we do to maintain that, to get that balance of telling the truth as well as, you know, we'll wrap up, wrap up on that question. Um, you, you talked about patriotism. Yeah. Um, there are some countries that would always say, God bless, mm -hmm. you know, this country. Mm -hmm. It started with storytelling. True. Infusing the story that they wanted the world to hear. True. Um, and I think that as writers, as yeah. much as we want to represent reality, I'm yeah. all for representing um, human stories, mm -hmm. stories that people do not even understand. Mm -hmm. It's good. And, and we have stark realities, right? Life mm -hmm. can be real and messy. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that we must not leave it there. Okay. We, we have the responsibility to create hope. hope. We have the responsibility to work with professionals in whatever field or space you're talking about that story what you're, you're telling to create hope, to elevate beyond what is and to begin to envision what is to okay. be. Thank you so much, Lola. There's <laughs> a wealth of stuff to say. Thank Some you other time so we'll much. have you on so that you'll have more time to expand on right. everything. I look but forward to it. Thank you so much. You've opened our eyes to a lot of stuff. Yes, You've yes. opened our eyes to a lot of stuff. Thank you so much, Lola, for, for this conversation. We Thank wish you. you so much more success in your career and your crusade. Yes. And your crusade. Thank and your you crusade. so much. So, um, that is a wrap on what we, um, the show we have here today with us. Um, a new Africa is emerging. There has never been a more opportune time to be proudly Nigerian and African. The baton continues with you in your own field and space. How are you helping to positively promote our rich African culture? We, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up the show. Stay tuned. <laughs>